So the first one I've got here, is there any advantage to playing a team in the playoffs who you faced earlier in the season? Well, I think you call it kind of evens out because both teams have faced each other, you know, and, you know, the other thing is that uh, every game's different, whether you're playing the same opponent or not, every game's different. It's handled differently. It's approached differently. Um, but there's familiarity on both sides. Second one I've got is what stands out about the Ravens defense on tape? Big, fast, and athletic. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're really good. They're a hot team, and uh, they're really good defensively, and it's going to be a tremendous challenge. David Beauclair. Hey. <clears throat> Um, Ryan Tannehill was hardly a newcomer to the league last year, but it was his first playoff experience. Does that, does that help him coming back into it this year or, or had he been experienced enough that the playoffs weren't a big deal for him last time? It's probably a really good question for Ryan. I thought he handled himself really well last year. I think, you know, anytime you have experience and kind of been there before and certainly helps, um, that's probably a really good question for Ryan. What about what about you? When you go through this week, you're looking at film. Do you do more this week, or do you try to keep it as as much a normal week as possible? I think you try to maintain a consistent routine. You know, um, I think you kind of that's what got you here. You try to maintain a consistent routine on whoever the opponent is and uh, <clears throat> prepare like you always do. Emily Proud. There, Emily. Rex Road. Man, we're having some muting issues. Uh, Hey, Pat, I have a sort of an open-ended question for you. What, what is it like to be Ryan Tannehill's quarterback's coach? What is it like? It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure, Joe. No, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you work with uh, someone as professional as Ryan is and the way he goes about his job, uh, you just enjoy coming to work, um, enjoying work with him, for him, helping him prepare. Um, it's been a pleasure and continues to be. Is there something – sorry, just quick follow-up. Is there something since you, since he came to now that has changed significantly about his game or that you have particularly focused on improving or changing? I, I really like what he's been doing. Um, you know, he's certainly been playing at a high level, and, um, you know, it, it's it's been good. You know, you, you obviously you want to be perfect, um, but it's never going to be perfect. And uh, – but, you know, Ryan is, is self-motivated in a lot of ways and prepares every week um, the same he would for any game. And he has a routine. He's a routine-based guy. Comes to work every day and very professional about it. So it's been good. Thank you. Paul? Hey, Pat. Um, wondering about Ryan's running, particularly the last three weeks, going into the end zone on his feet. Derek obviously creating opportunity for him. How much quarterback coaching involves running coaching, or is that uh, just kind of natural football that is left to him instinctively? Yeah, he's a good athlete, Paul. You know, um, obviously, as you know, a former receiver in college, and uh, he's no stranger to running with the football in his hand. And you know, the key for us at our position, though, is, is number one, the ball security aspect of it. And number two is, you know, uh, your health, uh, making sure you're aware um, from a health standpoint of when to get down, uh, when to, you know, go for the end zone, those types of things. And uh, um, a lot of that is a natural athletic ability, though, uh, by Ryan. Thanks. Jim Wyatt. And Pat, one thing he's done, which I guess is sometimes easier said than done, is, is start all 16 games for you, I guess. And what does that say to you? Uh, I guess it speaks to his dur durability, but has he also been pretty smart in making good decisions and to avoid big hits, although he still takes some? I think he's done a good job of, uh, you know, being cognizant and aware of, 
um, hey, you know, I need to throw the ball away here or, you know, I need to get down or, um, you know, or this is a moment where I need to go get it, you know. And uh, I think he's been done a good job of that. I think it's attributed to his, his teammates too, offensively, that have uh, protected him and, and uh, the offensive line blocking for him, the receivers running great routes, the ball coming out, the running backs running effectively with the ball. I think it all runs together. And I'm asked one on the deep ball. Uh, how good is he at that in your mind? And, and the one on Sunday was a was a thing of beauty, I guess. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool, you know, in that moment. And uh, he does throw a very good deep ball. I think that's evident. Um, he works at it, and uh, he's been accurate all year. We've got Emily's question here. I'm going to ask, uh, what makes Arthur Smith a good offensive coordinator? And what would you say makes him a good head coaching candidate? Number one, like the person, like he's an unbelievable guy. Um, he's creative. He's super organized. Um, he manages, you know, the time and the, of our staff and really effectively and, and you know, time spent, value received. Um, I think in game, he's very calm. Um, he's ahead of the game there, um, play by play. Um, he knows strengths and weaknesses of, um, our players. Um, he effectively uses our staff with our players. Um, there's just a lot there, a lot there. Like, uh, he's a great guy, good sense of humor. Um, and just been really effective as a coordinator and uh, love working for him. Edie? Yeah, what's up, Coach Pat? Uh, just kind of staying on that, that Coach Smith theme, how has that synergy been? Because, you know, you, you see a lot of the, the really good coaches there. There is a synergy there and, and a lot of uh, group thing. How has that been with, with uh, Coach Smith? Sorry about the – I live over here by the hospital, so it's, it's nonstop uh, – uh, sirens here in helicopters, but uh, yeah, I, I was getting concerned about you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all day, TD. It's it's nonstop. But uh, um, Arthur, the synergy's been great. To answer your question, Tron, I mean, you know, it's interesting. You work. I worked with Arthur. We all worked with Arthur when he was a tight end coach, and he's the same guy. <laughs> he's the same guy, and and he just really been able to implement what he's about in his plan, and it's just been awesome. I think he's inclusive uh, with all of us. Um, he understands what it was like to be an assistant because he was one, obviously, for a long time. Um, he's uh, very creative, open-minded, constantly trying to improve um, in a growth mindset. Um, and he articulates that to our players and our staff very effectively. And uh, it's just awesome working with Art. And he's just a great dude too, you know. So uh, it's been a it's been awesome. And then you you and and Ryan Tannehill, you you both seem to have that even kill. I mean, I don't see you on the sidelines jumping up and down after a big play. But I don't see you taking your hat off, and throwing it on the ground after a bad one. So knowing that, like, what's been the key for you, and also especially for for Ryan, just to be so even kill? How, how does that process work for you guys? I think uh, for me in my past, it's just my history as a, as a quarterback um, and the lessons along the way. I think uh, you can't get too high or too low um, when you play the position. And I, I played it, you know, from the time I was seven years old till I was 37. So it's a, a large portion of my life. And, and uh, you can't get too overhyped on the positives and then get too down on the negatives because – I think staying even keeled and, and uh, helps you, you know, if, if things are going and struggling, uh, I think keeping an even keel demeanor helps you kind of come out of it. If things are going great um, and suddenly something goes wrong, um, if you're too high on before, then you have a tough time responding. So I think it's just kind of the, you know, quarterbacks in general, a lot of them um, kind of have an even keel demeanor, you know, kind of on and off the field, not all of them, but, that's just uh, kind of how I am. Is there anything um, unique to, to how even killed Ryan has been in your time with him? Um, 
not necessarily unique. I, I just think the what make no mistake, he's ultra competitive. You know, don't ever excuse like um, his calm demeanor on the outside from being a fierce competitor. I think that's something about him that uh, is very evident to me and his teammates. Um, but he maintains that even keeled demeanor and that helps him in, you know, pressure situations, you know, like the other night, you know, at the end of the game, just maintain a calm demeanor, but ultra also being ultra competitive. Thanks coach Pat. All right. T. All right. No. We're going to wrap up with Joe Rexrod. Yeah, Pat, understanding that it takes everyone, of course, offensively, how would you characterize the synergy, the, you know, the mutual benefit and just the level of play that, that you guys have gotten from Ryan and Derek together here? Well, obviously the production has been tremendous. I, I think you have to though, take account for all the players on offense that, that perform and do their job. We, we, and I mean it, and we all mean it as a staff, like it takes all 11 on the field. And um, I know Derek would probably say the same thing, and so would Ryan. It takes all 11 to uh, to be able to throw and complete passes. It takes all 11 to rush the football. You know, it, it takes all 11, and we truly believe that. Um, I think we all feel good about whatever individual um, statistics come from that, but we accept it kind of as a group. Um but, you know, now we move on and, and it's, a, it's a new season and a new challenge.